by showing that they have an understanding and an empathy with the gamer's experience, they can pull off a really successful campaign. So this has been a bit of a whistle stop, but it has got us quite nicely to the creative question, is that from a design perspective, how do you design for the huge variety of activity in this ecosystem whilst catering for the most diverse spectrum of audiences? Okay, so we have that spectrum of games from Wordle to Fortnite, and we have the players of games from you know, you know, the teenagers to, to the geriatrics. How can we design and create products that serve this whole segment? Well, at Design Bridge and Partners, when brands come to us to help find their feet in this world, um, we try and approach it from three different angles. Um, one is authenticity. So brands, especially brands from out of the category, as we'll talk about in a little bit, it's about how do you show up in this world in a very authentic and credible way. The second piece is relevance, is that how do you design for relevance? The gamers are like a very inclusive community, but they're a very tough nut to crack, okay? So how can you always add meaningful value to their experience. And the last point, which I think is the most relevant here today, is the creativity point. It's such a fast category, there's so much noise going on. You know, if you're not creative, you will just go like a ship in the night and you'll not stand out. So that is a very, very whistle-stop tour of our point of view on gaming. I'm sorry, it was, it was so fast. But I'm now gonna pass over to uh, my colleague, Marta um, Swanee, who's a creative partner, design bridge partner, and Eric, who's a, a senior designer, um, and they're going to uh, put this into practice and show you how, um, you know, show you some amazing work which is going on in the world right now. Cool. Thanks, Ben. This is uh, do you want the clicker? You want this? Yeah, thanks. Um, so, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Marta. This is my colleague, Eric. And we thought we would, um, you know, Ben's put this, covered this idea of this kind of very exciting ecosystem that exists around games and a massive spectrum of gamers that surrounds it. So we've um, decided to choose five projects just to quickly go through that have interesting different creative approaches of brands coming into this e ecosystem and really reaching and resonating with this gaming audience. Do you want to? No, I'm going to hand over to Eric to start. Yeah, sure. Cool. Is this? Yep. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. So the first project that we're going to show um, is uh, all about how do we unite these 3.2 billion gamers, or at least as many as we can. Um, and these, this project is a visual identity project that we launched recently, uh, and it is for the ESL Face It group, which uh, Kai is from as well. Um, and ESL Face It group, or EFG, is basically a corporate holding company, uh, but the thing is that they own loads of brands in the gaming ecosystem that Ben was talking about. Uh, everything from uh, the world's biggest esports events to gaming festivals to uh, digital platforms and even mobile gaming. So it's pretty safe to say that they touch on pretty much almost every uh, type of gamer out there. Um, and I think unlike a lot of gaming companies that uh, maybe focus on maybe one or two gaming titles at a time, EFG has a like their portfolio covers such a wide spectrum of both gamers and games. Uh, and I think that was kind of the biggest challenge with this project was how do we you know, speak to not only um, their employees in a kind of professional manner in a B2B sense, but also how do we uh, speak to their entire audience in an authentic way that doesn't feel like a kind of dad at the disco kind of thing. Um, so yeah, we had to look for something that was like a common element through games. And what we found was in the UI itself. So um, the minimap is a pretty integral part of a lot of competitive games. Um, it's basically a, what, it, what it says. It's a minimap uh, with the players kind of represented on it. Um, and you know it's quite crucial in a lot of these competitive games. So you find it in Call of Duty, Counter Strike, uh, League of Legends. It's even in FIFA has their own minimap. Um, and I think what's interesting about it is it's a really important tactical piece of the, uh, for the gamer. So, you know, it's where you know, it's how you know where your teammates are, where your enemies are, and kind of get an overview of the entire field, um, which kind of relates to them as a corporate holding company, you know, having an overview of all the brands that they manage. But also, I think more importantly, the icons quite literally represent the player base in their games. Uh, so that essentially became the uh, foundation for the entire visual identity was using these uh, icons from the mini-maps. Um, 
And you know, we use them as a graphic device, uh, we use them as patterns, and we created this uh, headline typeface to go with it. Uh, and then along with that, we also created these um, background images, basically, where we took the maps from games, so famous maps like Dust from CSGO, um, or the Dota map, and we kind of recreated them in 3D, and then sort of uh, distorted them, blurred them a bit, recolored them. So they're more like an abstract background image, but there's a bit of a nod to the games that they represent as well. And yeah, that's kind of the whole visual identity for it. Um, it's, uh, I think it's, it resonates with gamers because you know, they can look at it, they can find the icon or the map that they associate with the games they play. Um, but also, um, I think it kind of shows that EFG are, it's a, it's a company that was started by gamers, but it's st and still is run by gamers, you know? They can still, they still get it. They're, they're still very authentic. Uh, and we launched it recently and it was uh, quite successful both internally and externally. So we're quite happy with that. The next project is a little bit different. It's uh, actually a campaign done by uh, the agency David in Sao Paulo. And I think where EFG kind of took, uh, found a graphic device, a common graphic element throughout games, this uh, relies more on finding a common experience that all gamers have been through at least once. Uh, so I'm just gonna play the video first and I'll talk a little bit about it after, after, afterwards. So yeah, basically Burger King uh, glitched out their own app and let uh, people or gamers um, find the glitches in their app for more discounts. But what I thought was even more clever was the fact that they uh, told gamers all over the world to basically just upload a clip of any, any game that you're playing where it's glitching out, tag us in it, and you get more discounts. I think that's the kind of smart thing where it's something that gamers already do. Glitches are hilarious to watch. They're, I mean, they're really frustrating when they happen, but at the same time, they're just quite funny. I mean, that video is just a joy to watch. Um, and I think, also, I think we're a bit jealous because we've always <laughs> wanted to do a project about glitches, uh, but because we work with games publishers or hardware clients, they are really not keen on us showing any glitches in the games, but maybe one day we'll get one through. Um, but yeah, I think it's just a really good way to show how a brand can, an outside brand uh, can come into the gaming space and you know, by showing that they have an understanding and an empathy with the gamer's experience, they can ca pull off a really successful campaign. Um, so yeah, and that's, that's those two projects. So Mark is gonna take you through a few more. Thanks.